They started hunting for the part of the brain which contains the clock. The search began in hamsters. Hamsters are nocturnal, but lead very regular lives. They sleep and wake in predictable cycles. So this is where we keep the hamsters. We call it a hamster hotel. And there are several animals in each hotel room, so to speak. We keep them in this dim red light. And that's very similar to the kind of burrow conditions under which hamsters usually live. In the day, the hamsters sleep, and you see no wheel rotations at all. And at night, they get in these wheels, and they run, or they play around the wheels. And every time they rotate the wheel, that sends off a signal, so we know they're active. And the computer actually runs continuously for years, watching each bin each day, every 10 minutes. And we can tell when they're active in their own nighttime and when they're inactive and in their own daytime. Previous experiments had suggested that a tiny part of the brain, called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, contains the clock. Ray removed this portion of the brain. The hamster now ate and slept at any time of the day or night. There was no rhythm to its activity. Then she did something that no one had done before. From a fetal brain, she punched out the suprachiasmatic nucleus and implanted it into the hamster without one. He soon recovered from the brain graft and his daily activity was again monitored. Even a transplant around here on day one. And you can see initially his behavior is temporally disorganized, but that within the period of about a week, it starts getting organized. His activity is restricted to this time of day, and at other times of day, he's completely inactive. His daily rhythm had been restored just by giving him back this tiny portion of the brain. And this was fantastic because it really proved that this tissue was indeed the clock.